Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and I am here to talk to you today about some life. I don't know, estate planning sounds kind of detailed or more than what I'm going to talk to you about. And really what it is, is this book. It's called I'm Dead, Now What? For real. Um, as some of you know, last year my aunt passed away and um, she didn't have any children. She had the eight of us, myself, my siblings, and my cousins. And so we were left her estate. And she did such a fantastic job of really making it, I hate to say easy for us, but easy to know and how to find the things. So I'm going to kind of talk about what she did and then what I'm going to do without, because we are definitely in different places in our lives. So Aunt Linda, bless you. What she did is she threw everything into a trust. So her condominium was paid for and all of her assets were into a trust and it was all listed. And at her home, she had everything in a manila folder, everything all of her accounts, all of her bills. There was no question what was where because everything was laid out in this filing cabinet. So I thought about it. I'm like, I'm just not a filing cabinet kind of girl. So that's where this book comes in handy. I ordered on Amazon. The link is in the description below. They have other ones if this you don't find this funny. I find it funny. And by funny, I mean, it's just put some levity to it. It's a very heavy topic. But what this is, is like a workbook. So on the front page, it tells you, you know, you have your content. I'm going to switch over the personal page because I started filling it out. But on here you have, you know, what is your occupation, your citizenship, your religious beliefs? Do you have military service? That actually came up to us because if you do have military service, there are burial options for you other than just at a cemetery. Any notes that you want to leave? Uh, where is my living will? That's a big one. You need a living will and you need advanced directives. And then it says my healthcare provider of uh, attorney document is located. Who has my power of attorney? Where is that paperwork? Um, my appointed agent. That's my power of attorney. Is it, do I have a do not resuscitate order? P exec, uh, advanced directives. Am I organ donating? What is my blood type? I don't know what my blood type is. And my doctor doesn't know, which I think is weird. And then it just goes on and on. It has my primary physician, their contact. What hospital do I prefer to go to? Where is it at? What's my pharmacy? I mean, this is not just if I die. This is if I'm in an accident. If I am not able to communicate, if people need to know what's going on with my life. You know, everything is in this one book. Um, it has stuff and then it goes into your medical. We also have key contacts. Who is the executor of my estate? What is their contact? Who is my attorney? Do I have an attorney? Do I have an accountant? Who is my tax preparer? Those things are important because we have to notify when you die. There are people that need to be notified. Health insurance, life insurance, your employer, on the front of life insurance, I'm sorry, health insurance and life insurance, when you leave your employment, a lot of times you can't take that with you. And I want to make this very clear. I am not a financial advisor. I am not any, I don't know anything other than what I've been through in my life. So I just want to be clear with that. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just telling you what experiences I have. And I will say that, you know, I had a, a colleague that wanted to retire early-ish and before she thought she was going to retire and she just then realized that she couldn't take her life insurance with her that she had been paying through her employer I mean those are things that are important especially when you get to a certain age in life that you know it's less expensive to take on a life insurance policy when you're younger so if you take on that policy now and you pay on it. And a lot of them too, they have like a certain amount of time before they'll even pay out any benefits to your people. Um, when you leave your employment, retire, whatever, you'll already have that in place. Um, so we have like, do I have a financial advisor? Who's my insurance? Who is my car insurance through? Do I have a mortgage? Do I have a car payment? This covers all of that. You have to notify a lot of people 
well, you don't because you're dead, but your people, your family, <laughs> whoever you have elected or who has agreed to take care of your things when you're gone, they, you know, there's a lot that they have to do. Um, at the time of my passing, here's your family member list of contacts to reach out to friends, family, employer, um, because that's a big one if you pass away and you're still working. Military contact if you have one. And then it says, at the time of my passing, my dependents. Where was I born? What's my citizenship? Who's my caregiver? Where are my documents located? Here's my health conditions, allergies, health care provider, health insurance information, financial information, location of documents. Um... And then it also has like your family member. So these are dependents information. So if you have an insurance policy on a child and you die, where is that? Like, you know, so each person, each dependent has a section of their name. What is their nationality? Where are they residing? Where were they born? Um, anything else? Is there somebody who's going to be their guardian? If something should happen to you, where are their documents located? What is their health information? You know, does your child not have any of these things or you care for a sibling? Like where, what's going to happen with them? Then there's a section on important documents. My will is located. You know, there are five copies of it. My driver's license, my driver's license number, my passport, passport number, birth certificate. Those are all things that are needed to fill out a death certificate because you need the legal name, birth date, parent's name. All of that can be found on a birth certificate. Are you married? Are you divorced? Um, is there anything on your computer? If there is, how do you get into your computer? What's the password to get in? Like those are basic things that you would need to know. So down here you could put, you know, the password to get into the garage is the password to my computer. And like my iPad uses my finger, but there's also a password. You know, I need to write that down. So if somebody needs to get into my financial documents and then financial, where's my bank? Where is all my money? you know, who's listed as beneficiaries. Like that is a huge thing you need to think about. When you have a bank account and something should happen to you or a loan and you don't have an estate. So you don't have enough money that your people that, you know, are taking care of your life after you're gone. If you don't have enough money to open an estate with an attorney, it's challenging sometimes to deal with vehicles and all of that, but it's costly to open an estate. So one thing you can do is when you have a bank account, make sure there's a beneficiary listed on those bank accounts. So if something should happen to you, that money goes directly to whomever you want it to have access, or you can put another owner on your account. Um, I care for my brother and I'm just a co-owner of his account. So if anything happens to him and I need to utilize his money for care for himself or his pet or whatever, I have, I have access to that. But don't wait until it's too late. You just need to go into your bank and set up an, a beneficiary. Everything you have financially should have a beneficiary listed. And that also makes it easier and cleaner. Um, so bank accounts is a big thing. Debit card, what's your debit card password? You know, maybe they need to have that. Any notes about your accounts, uh, credit card information, account numbers, phone numbers, who is an authorized user, things like that for your credit cards, any kind of store cards or anything like that. You want to make sure that's listed somewhere. Investments. Do you have any investment accounts, any retirement accounts? I have a 401k I need to make sure that that information and how to get a hold of somebody about my 401k is listed so that my dependent or my executor, in my case, it would be my niece, Sarah. I need to make sure Sarah has access to all this and I don't want her to have to stress. She's already stressing because somebody that she loves, hopefully, is gone and now she has all of this. So I'm just trying to make this as easy as possible for her. Um, so you wanna make sure that all of your you know, your finances and your bank accounts are listed. Do you have frequent flyer numbers? What's your tax record? My business information. And then your debts, my mortgage, 
home loan? Do you have a HELOC? Do you have something on your, do you have a car loan? Are you paying off student loans? Like all your creditors have to be notified when you pass away. So having all that information listed out, medical bills, credit bills, personal loans, judgments. Are there any judgments against you that you need to notify the court about? Um, if you have a, if your car is paid in full, where's the title? They need the title in order to sign that over so that they can dispose of your vehicle. Um, does anybody owe you money? Are you collecting money from a judgment from anybody? You know, did somebody, did you sue somebody and they're paying you in increments? Well, you know, your executor needs to know about that. Um, commercial business information. So for me, I need to put all of my business stuff in here for my YouTube channel, for my Etsy how to get into my Etsy shop and shut it down, how to find my tax documents for that business, what's my password so that that person can go into my YouTube and officially close my YouTube account down. Like those are things, my Facebook, how do I go in and shut down? What's my Facebook password, social media? It is very disturbing, trust me. Somebody hacked my mom's Facebook. I didn't have, her, I don't have her login for it so I couldn't shut it down. And they hacked into it and sent me a message. And that is very disturbing. I'm not, I'm not kidding. So being able to have that and have it written out. So this is also a map for your family. Like they're going to flip through here and be like, oh, she had this. She had, you know, because everybody doesn't know all your business. And then what, if, what your beneficiaries can expect. So who should they reach out to to say, Aunt Lordy's gone, here's her death certificate, I'm the beneficiary. So what type of policy? What is the account number? What is their contact information? So I would go through here and say, okay, well, you're my beneficiary on this bank account, on this 401k, on this tax account, on this stocks and bonds. You're listed as a beneficiary. You need to go to that company and let them know that you are that I am deceased so they can pay out. But by having all this written down for her, you know, it makes it easier. My employer benefits, if I'm still working, then I have other benefits through my job and they need to know that I'm gone and that she needs to reach out to them because there's benefits gonna be paid to her. Um, Social security, my name, my account number, where's my social security card? What is my social security number? Those are important when somebody passes away as well. Day of birth, make sure that's very clear. Uh, my retirement accounts, where are they located? How am I being dispersed? Who is the beneficiary? This is also good for us to look at, to think about maybe what we need to prepare for. Am I a veteran? Do I get veteran benefits? Uh, what real estate do I own? Do I have any other property? And then like personal property, my jewelry, where where do I want my jewelry to go? Who wants what? Who gets what? Do I own commercial property? Do I have a commercial vehicle? Do I have, you know, heirlooms and personal effects? What is it? I have my grandmother's diamond wedding ring. What is it? Where is it located? And personal notes like, hey, this was great grandma Betty's wedding ring. She got it on her 30th anniversary. She would love for you to wear it. It's very, you know, it's very important to our family. I have a, a clock that came over with my great grandparents from Ireland. Like, I want that to be known. That is not a junk clock. That means something to my family. Um, obviously, most things your family would know about, but if there's not, do I have a storage unit? We don't want to end up on storage wars, folks. So if you have a storage unit, somebody needs to know so they can go get your stuff. Do I have a safe? If you have a safe, what's the combination to the safe? Where is it located? I mean, this all stuff, it doesn't necessarily have to be kept in a written form, but somebody needs access to these numbers. Um, any hidden valuables? Do I got thousands of dollars buried in my mattress? Somebody needs to know that before they send it to the Goodwills, you know? Life insurance, homeowner's insurance, rental insurance, property insurance, auto insurance, all those things can also come with hidden benefits that maybe your executor doesn't know about, but you know about it, so you're gonna write it down. Do I have an HSA? How do they get access to my health savings account? Who's my pets? This is a big one. Planning for your pets. I have two cats. Sarah knows if anything happens to me, she has two cats now. And she loves them, so she's okay with that. But people need to know, like, 
I have two cats. This is their veterinarian. Here's their medical issues. Wellington takes blood pressure medicine. I don't want him to not have that if something should happen to me. Even if I'm not dead, if I'm incapacitated and somebody comes and they're helping Sarah, Wellington needs his medicine every day. That needs to be written down somewhere. Um, what to pay, what to close, what to cancel. Utilities. Who is my electric through? Who is my gas through? Who is my water? In the day of paperless, you're not going to have all the bills and invoices and statements that my aunt had for us to know who to contact. I don't get paper bills anymore. I get it all through email. So A, she needs to have my email information, but having it written down, like for me, I don't have a water provider that comes to my condos, but I have gas, I have electric. Excuse me. I have a cell phone provider. Who is that through? What's my account number? You know, um, online retail accounts that maybe need to be a checked in on or cancel my auto ship through my floss club. You know, we need to reach out to them and maybe shut it down. Shut down my Amazon Prime, my Audible, my Canva account. Anything I get auto ship, the pets, Chewy.com, that information, my account number, login needs to be listed. Um, other online accounts, charities. Do I have charities that I want to give to? Do I have charities that I would love for you to say, the, here's their name, here is their number. In lieu of flowers at my funeral, I would like donations sent to this pet rescue. Like whatever, just make sure it's, no, it's listed. Do I have auto pay set up? Am I auto paying things? I can't tell you in the bank that I work at how many accounts are on auto pay and the family member has deceased, we can't shut it down until there's an executor. So there's, it's a lot of useless, you know, stuff. But if I said to Sarah, here's how to get in my bank account. This is on auto pay, shut her down. You know, she can log in and take care of that. Um, do I have any memberships, a Y membership or whatever, museum memberships, things like that, that need to be canceled, subscriptions to magazines, um, you know, here's my email, social media account. Where's my library card? I don't know why that's in here, but that's, that's okay. And then miscellaneous information. And then my personal wishes. So in the back here, there's a whole section you can write down your personal wishes. You know, what do I want? What do I, am I, that is the one thing my aunt did not do. She did not tell us what she wanted. Um, we guessed and we're comfortable with our decision and we're happy where she's laid to rest. But we didn't know. Nobody really knew what Aunt Linda wanted. So that needs to be documented as well. So I know this sounded like some kind of um, advertisement for this book. It's more of a, this is a tool that you would need. Um, there's lots of options. There's free printouts you can get on the internet. You don't have to order something. I feel like this book was, oh, it was $14.99. It says so right here. Um, obviously, if you do something like this in print instead of something digital or even digital, you need to update this. So once you have all your information in here and then I decide I've canceled something or I've changed something, you need to keep up with it. But at worst, if you don't, it's a place for your person to start that's here to clean up our life. I know this was kind of a heavy video, but I felt important it was important. And during, you know, it's the beginning of the year. It's time to reflect on things. And knowing what I know, I feel like this is important for our age demographic to keep up with. And for younger people as well. It's time to, you know... It's only going to get more challenging as the generations go on because it's going to become more digital, you know, and that's the key we found with my aunt was the paper trail she left behind for us. So if there's not going to be a paper trail, we need to have some, we need to create our own. So I just thought this was something that would be handy for everybody to know. And I am slowly working my way through this book and filling out the information that's pertinent and now that it's tax time I have a lot of these documents collected together so I will sit down and fill it out as I am working through all my stuff at the beginning of the year so I hope this was helpful and that you're having a fantastic day and I will talk with you later bye